thank you very oh there we go so thank you very much so here you go a story for you it's either it's lovely to see you all here on the graveyard shift or last speaker of the day the one you'll remember does that work for you sarah there we go right so quick intro for those of you who i've not met previously um obviously i'm zoe zoe russell i'm based over in rugby my business is zhr marketing and i help micro business owners help make marketing easy and successful in their businesses so my goal for today's um uh, presentation here is to make sure that you go away with at least one thing that you can implement in your business to make marketing a bit easier for you so not putting any pressure on myself there obviously now um you're obviously expecting me to start talking about email campaigns direct mail social media etc because that's what people think of when you say marketing but um i'm not going to um because actually when it comes to starting work on marketing your business that pretty promotional stuff is just not your first priority if you've not really been involved in marketing before actually um, what you really need to focus on is getting the fundamentals right in your business first so that when you do come to start spending money on that promotional marketing it brings you the right kind of customers who want to spend money on um, your stuff at the price that you want to sell it at and understanding this and getting these fundamentals right can actually be a massive game changer for small business owners. So what are these fundamentals? So on a simplest level, and you know, we're all busy, busy small business owners, so we need it to be nice and simple. The key things to worry about are goals, target market, product offering and pricing. So let me expand on those for you. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about now, people will have um, sort of mentioned little bits that feed into this before. So you might recognize some things from things that Stuart was saying, Rebecca, Peter, Michelle, etc. And it's because marketing, it, you know, it all fits together. Um, so when you start on your goals, for example, when you know what you want to achieve from a marketing perspective, you can then work out how much you need to sell and what price you need to sell it at. And it's, it's just kind of doing your basic maths. And then when you know how much you want to sell, you can see the size of the promotional job in front of you. So you kind of set your goals and remember, we want them to be smart. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. Um, but, but say, for example, you want to make £10,000 a month and you're selling a widget that costs £100. That means you've got to sell 100 widgets a month. So that's 1,200 sales a year, which is a massively different prospect than selling a 12-month coaching programme at £1,000 a month, for example. So um, you'd only need to make 10 sales um, to achieve that. So the approaches that you'll have to take in your marketing will be really different. So getting those goals nailed at the beginning um, helps to give you the idea of the size and scope of the promotional marketing job that will be in front of you. And obviously also helps you with that motivation to keep moving forwards and gives you something tangible to measure your success against as you go forward as well. So that's your, your quick whistle stop tour of, of goals. <laughs> um, Target market, I cannot bang on about this one enough. Um, obviously, what um, Stuart was saying before, what Michelle was saying specifically before, it's, it's, it's just so important. And your target market is the set of people that you want to sell to. And when you're clear on who your target market is, it will help you make decisions about so many other things in your business. Now, we've all been in networking meetings, not this one, obviously, um, but where people say, I want referrals to anybody, da, 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 da. No, you don't. Because what you need to do is work out exactly who's going to be the right person for you to sell to because they're the people that will want to pay the money and will be good customers and think about your target market in practical terms now it's going to differ depending on whether you're selling business to business or business to consumer but you know some things that you can think about really practical things where are they based do they need to be local or nationwide worldwide 
What size of business do you want to sell in if you're doing business to business? What kind of turnover do they have to have? Is there a particular industry, real tangible things that you can grab hold of that then you can actually look out and see that's the sort of business I want to work with? And it starts helping you to narrow down the pool and also allows you to start looking in depth at what will be really important to them as well as how to get in front of them. Then think about some of those softer things that are important. You know, do they have dogs? Yes, tell them to join Circle Networks. Um, do they like to travel? You know, people buy from people. So if it's important for you to have something in common with your customers, it's important to include that in your target market description. And when you understand who your target market is, it will make help you make decisions about what you include in your product or service, the words that you use to describe it from the promotional tactics that will be most effective to the price that you can sell it out at. So product offering, you need to be absolutely crystal clear on what it is that you're selling. You need to know that in your own mind, because if you don't understand it, neither do your prospects. And your prospects need to understand what they can buy from you. There's, if they're confused, they just won't come and spend any money with you. And this is really important as well. Remember, you're selling the sizzle, not just the sausage. So it's not about your product or service specifically. It's about what it can do for your ideal client and what's in it for them. Now, do you buy a drill, for example, because you want a drill? possibly not you buy it so you can make a hole but you want the hole so you can put up the shelf you want the shelf so you can put your favorite book somewhere so it's in easy reach so you can choose what to read whenever you feel like it you know sit down have a couple of glasses of wine brainstorm to the silliest degree about what the benefit of what you're offering might be and sometimes that really silly thing might be the kernel that actually gives you that fabulous idea that is the big benefit that actually is what people will want to buy into and then finally price because you need to make a profit so if you're selling cheap you need to sell a lot to make it profitable if your service takes ages to create and deliver you'll only be able to work with a finite number of clients. So your price will need to reflect that. And whatever you do when you're setting your prices, don't set them based on a financial goal of earning what you used to earn when you were employed. You're self-employed now, you can earn shitloads. So otherwise, what's the point? Excuse me. So I get very, very passionate about that. You know, play around, keep doing the maths. How many do I have to sell at this much to achieve my goal? Is it possible to fulfill that many sales? If you're a service business, add on a bit extra because you're probably undercharging and you're definitely worth it. But always keep that target market and their perspective in mind. You know, perfect example. Think about supermarkets, Waitrose versus Lidl. Both of them get the customers that they want coming through the door, buying the things they want to sell at the prices they want to charge. They know their target market and their products and prices are consistent with that. So to recap, so that you've got something to go away with, set great goals, work backwards so you know how much you have to sell and at what price to make a profit. Be crystal clear on your target market. It literally informs everything else you will do in your business, from the message you use to communicate with your prospects to the channels you end up choosing to get in front of them. Make sure your products and services contain the stuff that will be really valuable to your target market client and shout from the rooftops about the benefits that they'll get from you. And price your product or service so you can make a profit in your business. And then once you've got um, all this stuff sorted and only then can you start working on your promotional marketing activities. Because if you don't get this stuff sorted, you'll get inquiries from the wrong kind of people who will try and screw you on the price or want you to do stuff that is not your bag, that will take up loads of time, that you're not getting properly recompensed for, and you'll start to fall out of love with your business. So. 
marketing it's not fluffy it's not pink it's not just advertising it is certainly not just social media that's another soapbox get those fundamentals right in marketing and it will affect your business in the best possible way from top to bottom thank you very much